Okay, we're in the ham shack uh, today for this video. And for this one, we're going to talk about how to properly set up audio levels when operating PSK31. And, uh, and how you might use the RF envelope that you monitor on an oscilloscope to help you set those levels. Or at least I'm going to show you how using a scope can help verify that uh, just properly using the metering that you've got in your radio or maybe external metering that you might be using um, you know, through a tuner or maybe an outboard you know, SWR meter or power meter uh, might help you. So if you use these tools properly, um, you'll see how that results in getting a good clean RF output. Uh, I've got the rig set up right now going into position one on the antenna tuner which is just going into a dummy load so we're not going to be transmitting out over the air. Okay, And uh, we'll take a look at uh, uh, how to properly set this up. So we've all seen, uh, if you look at uh, you know, the, the tracks uh, in the waterfall display of PSK31 signals, you kind of get this railroad track type of thing that goes back and forth between uh, you know, two different, you know, following kind of two different tracks. And you've sometimes seen guys that have got things overdriven and they've got you know, images or mirrors of that signal on either side of their track. Cause and that's almost always caused by improperly adjusting the audio levels, having the audio levels driving too hard uh, into the transmitter. Okay, so let's take a look at what that looks like. So I'm going to turn on the uh, the transmit here, okay, look at the RF envelope, okay. So with the RF envelope turned on here, this is what a properly adjusted uh, PSK31 RF envelope looks like when uh, we're just transmitting the idle pattern, okay. And you'll notice, if we look carefully here, I'm running at about 10 milliseconds of division. And that's probably a good way to go because uh, the, the repetition interval uh, during the idle pattern is about 31 hertz or about 32 milliseconds or so. So uh, having a 10 millisecond of division you know, makes it convenient to kind of look at that envelope. And what you're looking for is this nice sinusoidal pattern. No flat topping at the top or the bottom. Okay, nice crisp crossovers at the middle. That all kind of tells you you've got things nice and clean. Now let's look at what happens to this pattern if I overdrive. I'm going to take uh, the audio level out of the computer and turn it up. Okay, And uh, by doing this, if you look carefully now, you can see right at the top here how it's kind of coming up and kind of turning a corner a little bit sharper here, flat topping a little bit. It doesn't look nice and sinusoidal anymore. It's a little bit of a subtle difference, but let me, let's kind of go back and forth between this, which is dirty, okay, and then that right there, which is clean. If you look at real carefully at the, say, the top of that sinusoidal pattern, you can kind of see the difference between that distorted signal and that clean signal there. Okay, so let's go talk, uh, take a look at how we might recognize when we're getting a good signal like this just by looking at the meters and things like that we have available to us. So with this signal properly adjusted, we look over at the, the rig, I can see that uh, I'm just barely tickling uh, the ALC, okay, on the meter here. So I'm well within the re the, re the recommended zone for ALC. I can see the power is about 25 watts, okay. And uh, if I go and adjust to where I had that distorted signal, okay, so I reach over here, turn the volume up out on the the radio. We can see I'm kind of distorted here. If I look back over at the rig, there's my indicator that my ALC is way way out uh, over where it needs to be. So let's turn this back down, okay to get the ALC just barely tickling. Okay, and now if I take a look at this, it looks nice and clean. So that's where we want to be. And uh, you can kind of see why. And the other thing I like to do sometimes is adjust this so that uh, the ALC is uh, even not even there at all, and maybe letting it bring the power down a little bit. If I look uh, where I, with the RF power meter, okay, I've, I know I've got a clean signal here running at about 20 watts. If I turn the uh, audio level down just a little bit more, I can see the power just dropped a little bit, okay? And if I look down here, I've got no ALC. So that means that the rig is not limiting the power at all. It doesn't have to do any level control. And that's kind of the ideal situation, really. Bring the audio level down so that the ALC is just going away and the power just begins to drop. And then you're kind of guaranteed to have a really nice, uh, clean RF envelope uh, when you look at it on the scope, okay? So that's kind of what I like to do. Let me turn the transmit off here. Okay. Now I kind of like to set this up so that um, uh, we adjust the audio level such that the ALC 
comes all the way down and then just disappears and then while monitoring the RF output power continue to drop that uh, audio drive level just to the point where the output power begins to drop okay and then that's your indication that uh, your the rig is not trying to do anything to limit the RF output power and that it's completely going to be driven and controlled by the audio output uh, from the uh, software and sound card itself and the scope kind of verifies that so anyway that's how I properly set this up uh, for those that all that you're interested in you can kind of shut off now I just want to also add a little bit of extra credit here in terms of scope setup as I mentioned we're running at about uh, 10 milliseconds of division um, in order to get that nice stable waveform that we were looking at here uh, I basically had set up uh, you know, some triggering here I'm triggering off of that signal uh, just doing a DC coupling and I adjusted the level to get a stable trigger not all scopes will be able to trigger on this envelope nice and clean like that you might get something that kind of rolls maybe you know kind of looking like this and you can still make those measurements and observations by watching that signal as it rolls by so don't don't be you know concerned if you can't get a nice stable pattern on your scope now how I'm getting this signal that's another uh, interesting thing I've done two videos in the past one that uh, talks about different ways of monitoring your RF output using a scope uh, and that one shows a simple resistive splitter that you can use resistive sampling T um, so that's uh, one you know that's one way to kind of get an RF you know signal into the scope to look at uh, another uh, video I did talked about various types of sampling T's in the RF samplers um, and just talked about how you can build some and a couple that were commercially available to get the RF input into the scope and that works as well what I'm doing here in the shack is even simpler than that uh, this tuner I have is a Tentec uh, 238 and it's got uh, a number of different antenna positions and uh, in my shack I'm only using a few of those positions position number one is just going into the dummy load which is what I've been transmitting into positions two and three are unused and position four is going into my antenna system okay so what I did is I connected uh, this coax here okay all the way into the back into position 2 okay and uh, there's just enough of enough wiring interconnect you know and wiring up to the switch inside the box of the tuner here to pick up RF now you want to be really careful you don't switch the the antenna to position 2 you don't want to transmit right into the scope that's a good way to destroy your scope if, uh, you know if you put any kind of real RF power into it but by simply letting uh, the internal you know switch and wiring inside the tuner to essentially become your RF pickup and again being careful not to switch to position 2 you can get an R enough RF coupling to be able to show it on the scope very easily and uh, you notice we were only running 20 watts if I turn that back on again, we can actually see I'm getting uh, you know, about uh, almost 400 millivolts of uh, deflection, you know, uh, on the uh, on the scope with that. So it certainly makes it really easy, you know, to uh, uh, you know, you know, get a uh, an RF signal monitor on your oscilloscope without having to even build or buy anything. If you may already have a uh, multiple antenna switch positions on your uh, on your tuner. So anyway, I hope you found this helpful in uh, setting up uh, your uh, PSK31 levels properly so you can provide nice, clean you know, signals on uh, rece received waterfall displays uh, for folks that you're going to talk with. Anyway, any questions that you might have, certainly please let me know. And thank you for watching, as always.